ready to worship the Lord this morning? Let's worship him this morning. How great is our God? Oh, 
satisfied with where I am. And I need more of him every day of my life. I need more of him. I want more of his love. I want more of his power in my life. Father, more than ever right now, God, we need more of you. That's all we ask for.
mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy.
King of kings, you are my everything.
Thank you for inhabiting our praises this week. We love you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you alone. For you are the creator. Bless our leaders, Father, as you guide them. Help them always to hear your words, Father, and see your direction. I think I'm, there we go. There I am. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. I tell you what, what a Father's Day so far it has been. Happy Father's Day to all you dads. Amen. The place today. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Praise God. What a Father's Day it's been. I woke up this morning, man. I tell you what, my wife greeted me and she fed me grapes and she stood up with the fan and bought me roses and 
you know, maybe some bacon and eggs and pancakes and cantaloupe and milk and coffee. And then when I woke up, <laughs> amen, I tripped over the dog on the way to get my cornflakes and milk and, and cup of coffee. <laughs> and it still was a good <laughs> Father's Day morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Great to see you here today. We're celebrating dads today. And um, I went to the store, but we, <laughs> so pray for your pastor, please, because I've had too much coffee this morning, and we just want to <laughs> give God praise. I am dressed in my Father's Day costume, and so I just want to be on <laughs> to present the word. And I tell you what, to your fellows who are not dads, we appreciate you just as well. Amen, because you have that spirit of leadership that's in you that's needed in the house of God, that's needed in the, in the, in the kingdom of God. Amen, that warrior spirit. I know some women have a warrior spirit. Amen, but God God needs a few good men. Amen, to take their place in the kingdom. Let's pray as we listen to the thunder roll in. Amen. By the way, Brother Chester said to tell everybody hello and thank you for the prayers. He's praying for everybody here every day. And trust me, when he says he's praying for somebody every day, you can take it to the bank. He's praying for you every day. And uh, uh, tried to reach uh, the Lewises, amen, to just to see how they're doing. People still have not been able to make it in. Keep praying, amen. You know, we're still on the tail end of this thing, it seems. It still is an issue, it seems. Amen. Just keep praying. Amen. We still believe, still believe God from the beginning all the way through it until the end. Father, we love you so much. We give you praise for this day. Lord, we come to celebrate dads today. Lord, above all, we come to celebrate you, our Heavenly Father, in this day. Lord, we magnify your holy name. Speak to us today, Father, through your Holy Spirit, as your word comes forth. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. I'd like to open up with a couple of stories for you that I found interesting on this Father's Day. And the first one goes like this. There's a story that is told of a father of five children who came home with, with one toy. Five children with one toy. Hey Amen. That says something about the dad. I don't know. I think he was had, trying to experiment or something. He summoned his children and asked which one of them should be given the present. He asked his children, okay, who is the most obedient one here? Who never talks back to mom and does everything she says to do. There was a few seconds of silence, and then all the children said in one accord, you play with it, Daddy. <laughs> Ask a child an honest question, they're going to give you an honest answer. This next story is not so humorous. In a book called The Effective Father, the author Gordon MacDonald writes this. He said, it is said of Boswell the famous biog biographer of Samuel Johnson, that he often referred to a special day in his childhood when his father took him fishing. The day was fixed in his mind, and he often reflected upon many things his father had taught him in the course of their fishing experience together. After having heard of that particular excursion so often, it occurred to someone much later to check the journal that Boswell's father kept and determine what had been said about the fishing trip from the parental perspective. Turning to that date, the reader found only one sentence entered which read, gone fishing with my son, a day wasted. One more story. A young successful attorney said, the greatest gift I ever received was a box I got one Christmas from my dad, a small box. Inside the box was a note saying, Son, this year I will give you 365 hours. One hour every day after dinner, it's yours. We will talk about what you want to talk about. We will go where you want to go, play what you want to play. It would be your hour. My dad not only kept his promise, he said, but every year... He renewed it, and it's the greatest gift I've ever had in my life. I am the result of his time. 
The first story I want to read to you because I just thought it was funny. <laughs> but the next two are a comparison of a dad who was an absent dad even though he was present. And of a dad who was present but who was engaged in his child's life. Those are the only two kinds of dads that there are. For some here today, maybe you had a dad who was or is a lot like the first dad who was present but is absent in your personal life. For some here today, you, maybe you've had a dad who was present but engaged in your personal life and your daily life. For some of you, it, it was somewhere in between or maybe just a funny dad <laughs> that you had and a funny life with your dad. Or, we may have some here today, you are one of these dads in these stories. Because your dad was one of these dads in these stories. How your dad was or is with you is likely how you are and who, are, who you will be with your kids, yourself. Whatever the case, fathers are strong influences in the lives of their children. Who are fathers, which will produce strong and lasting effects on the lives of our kids and our grandkids and so on. If today you are a child of God, listen, you have a heavenly father who was the greatest influence in your life. He is a very present God and a very present father actively engaged in your life. He is a father who has so many gifts he gives to his children and a father who would never see a day as wasted with you, even if your day is not so wonderful. We have a heavenly father that even if we mess up terribly, he never, ever, ever pushes us away. We have an ever present father who was actively engaged in our lives, who never goes away, who's always working to see the embitterment of us. He's a loving father. Some people think it's no fun serving God because of all these commands. Amen. The commands are for us. And I'm, i got to say, I, I have fun being a Christian. Amen. People call me a Jesus freak. I said, yeah. Is that all you got? How about aisle runner, pew jumper, and Bible thumper, holy roller. Amen. Praise God. And I get to remember after leaving church what I did during church versus when I lived in the world. I got a, I got a heavenly father that just loves, knows how to love. And I love the way he loves. And I love how he is with his kids. Amen. You know, he can be funny sometimes. Too. He created you. I mean, me. <laughs> Do you love the Lord? But how your dad was is how likely how you're going to be. See, dads, you're a great influence in the lives of your family. You're a great influence, a lasting impact, a lasting influence that's going to, even long after you're gone, is going to stay with your kids forever. My dad is gone today in heaven. He's been gone four years now. He's still an influence in my life. He still speaks to me. No, I don't hear his audible voice. <laughs> but what his life was still speaks to me. It still strengthens me of what he taught me to be. My dad taught me to be a fighter and never a runner. Amen. To fight and, and face your circumstances and overcome those circumstances rather than let them overtake you, no matter what they are and no matter who they are. Amen. And I do live up to that. And I pass it down to my children, hopefully, and, and they've taken that stance too with their kids. Listen, your dads are an impact. We are an impact. And that can be for the good or for the bad. Amen. But today, I come to praise about our Heavenly Father. Amen. Who is the greatest influence that ever was or ever could be. Amen. And we have a great future because of Him. He never sees a day with us as wasted, even when it's not so wonderful. Genesis 26, 24 says, God speaking, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you and I will bless you. Genesis 28, 15 says, I am with you and I will protect you wherever you go. 
Exodus 6, 6 says, God says, therefore say to the people of Israel, I am the Lord. I will free you from your oppression and will rescue you from your slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with a powerful arm and with great acts of judgment. Jeremiah 42, 11 says, God says, I am with you to save you and to deliver you. In Haggai chapter 1, verses 13 through 14, God assures the people by saying, I am with you. And he stirred up their spirits, the remnant of believers, and they came and did work in the house of the Lord. And says it again in the next chapter, verse 4, and Haggai 2, 5, God again says, my spirit remains with you, so fear not. In Matthew chapter 28, 20, God says, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. We know that God is present as the universal creator that he made all things. Can you say amen? And we know him as God all powerful, that there is no God above him or equal to his power. Amen. But we also need to know that God is present everywhere and for everyone. He is there universally, but he's there for you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. I don't care how bad you think you are or how sinful you think you've gotten or how troubled you think you might be. You're never bothering God with your issues. And he knows you got him. And you know, he's never a condemning father. He's a loving father. I used to think that he was. Amen. One, one thing I realized in my life, see, there was a time in my life, I will tell you this, that me and my dad didn't get along. And, and I didn't have much to do with him because of certain things that had evolved. And, and when, as I became a Christian, I began to see my relationship with God based on the relationship with my earthly dad. And I begin to think that if I messed up, that I'm going to get clobbered, messed up with God, that God's going to clobber me. Amen. That God is going to come after me and God is going to get the belt or whatever else and I'm going to get the beat down. Amen. But I learned as I, was, as, as I began to grow with God that God is nothing, nothing, nothing like that with his children. He brings correction to us, yes, but it's also with love and it's also with mercy and compassion, not with a sledgehammer. Although sometimes I've needed the sledgehammer. I have the bald spot because of where he's going like this a few times. Brother Dwayne has been corrected more than me. But I'm not, I'm not gonna look over there. I had to get at least one up in there. Well, just, just one of them. How many of you ladies have bald spots? Okay. Let me cover that. You love the Lord. <laughs> but we can begin to see from scriptures that there is a hint in these verses that God is wanting to be ever present with us. He's wanting to be personal with us. You see, he can't be just God in our life. He's got to be personal God. He's got to be Lord, not just Savior. In these verses, God is addressing people personally through the prophets and sometimes directly. Listen, he wants to be our ever-present father, not just for the world, but on a personal level with us. In the Gospel of Mark 14, 36, it says, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed, Abba, Father, he cried out. Everything is possible for you. Please take this cup from me, yet I want your will to be done and not mine. There are only three places in the whole Bible that Abba Father is mentioned. And I'm going to produce those to you today. And one of them is right here when Jesus is praying in the garden. Listen, I'll say it again. Abba Father, he cried out. Everything is possible for you. Please take this cup from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Listen, in this prayer, Jesus is calling out to God. And he's calling up Abba Father because the term Abba is descriptive of a personal or intimate characterization of God. He's a big God, but he's a personal God. He's Abba Father. He's Father. Father. Amen. We, if his, as his children, he's not a distant father. He's not absent. He's present. And he engages in our daily lives. And Jesus is calling out to his, his personal father. He hasn't called. You notice he didn't say Jehovah God. He didn't get all flareful with it, you know, like we do in prayer. Sometimes we think we've got to pray the King James Version of prayers. O Jehovah God, thou knoweth that I am here. Please heareth my prayer and toucheth my soul. 
for thine are mine, and mine art thine, and thou art art. I didn't know God's name was art, but <laughs> how great thou art. We don't pray no King James prayers. And Jesus ain't praying no King James prayers. He's calling out to his, he's in a desperate time, a desperate situation. He needs his personal God. Not just universal acknowledgement, acknowledgement of God, but he wants his personal father. He wants his personal father. Whenever I was in trouble about anything, and I saw my dad coming up, especially when somebody was out to get me, and I saw my dad step up, you know what it did to me? I felt some boldness, just like the big brother I talked about last week. I felt some boldness. But my dad would kick you up. I'm just saying right now. He just would do that. He wouldn't scare nobody. And then when I'd see him come, it's like, it's going to be on now. There wasn't a time that we were together, but there was a time that God restored us. And man, he made the greatest impact in the last 20 years on me as a man. Can I just interject something? Talk about dads. Dads, you never stop being an influence on your kids. I used to think that once they turned 18, I was done. It's over. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Me and Sister Missy can go to the beach. <laughs> Hallelujah. We go to Pensacola and play shuffleboard and hang out and play checkers or whatever. Blah, 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 blah. No. I just don't. It, once you, if you start out being a parent, you are always a parent. Listen, daddies can tell you something. Stay engaged in your kid's life. Not just present, but engaged. Amen. And give them the gift of time. In South Louisiana, you demand if you're working 40,000 hours a week. Amen. And we know we have to work. Let me tell you something. That has killed more families in this part of the country than anywhere else because of the way we have to work. We know we have to work, but when your end time is in, make it good. Make it count. That's for free. Hallelujah. You love the Lord. I know that God is present everywhere, but he wants to be personal God with us. Let me continue. He's the creator of all things. He's created. He's all-powerful, but he's present everywhere and for everyone we see from the scriptures he wants to be on a personal level. And we see Jesus in this prayer. Jesus is calling God Abba Father because he wants that personal God. Jesus our Lord is in the garden praying in agony over what he will have to endure. He is expressing his emotion to, to his father and his thoughts to his Abba Father in a most personal way. And at that moment, he's not just God Jehovah. He is Abba Father. Can I interject something else? Always be honest with God in your prayers and your prayers will be more effective. The effectual fervent prayer. Of a righteous man availeth much. When you humble yourself before God in prayer, pour yourself out to the Lord and be honest with Him. Tell Him what is in your innermost thoughts. Tell Him what you're, you honestly feel about yourself. Express yourself to God. He's listening to you. People have said, well, I've heard you should never question God. I ask God questions all the time. And sometimes He says, that's not for you to know just yet. <laughs> you know, some... And, and, and can, let me dispel something else too. Real, real quick. Just real quick. Can I do it just real quick? God always answers your prayers. Sometimes it's no. So if the answer is no, stop fasting for 40 days and 40 nights because you want a yes answer. Because all you're going to get at the end of four days is hungry. How many of you have kids? I mean, like, really? You've had kids and you tell them no and they said, because it's not... <laughs> Because it's not the answer they want to hear. I know sometimes we get that way we go. Oh. Well, God, I asked you for this. You said if I say in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Come on, are you with me? Don't we get like that? I said in the name of Jesus, so I should get what I want, right? God said, where did you hear that? What version did you read that from? Amen? No. Sometimes it's no, but God always answers prayers. And sometimes it's wait which is something we all like to do. He's Abba Father. Jesus is expressing emotion. He's being honest with him about how he feels. 
In God, we have an Abba Father, a Heavenly Father, who we can have an intimate relationship with, who we can privately express our deepest hurts and emotions and true thoughts with without their fear of being judged or condemned. In Romans 8.15, it says, So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit, and he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. You see, God is out there. But I'm sorry to say, he ain't your Abba until you're the son or daughter. Well, I'm alive. Aren't I a son or daughter? You might be a son or daughter of his creation. But we're not adopted into the sonship of believers until we yield ourselves before Jesus and receive Christ as personal Lord and Savior. Only then do we have a hope of heaven, and only then do we have a hope of his promises. Until he is your Abba, You're an illegitimate child. I'm going to be nice about that. Sir. You love the Lord. But God adopts us when we're saved as his own children. I praise God he's my father. He goes from being God, the creator of my life, to Abba Father, my father, and I become his child. Listen, under Roman adoption, the life and standing of the adopted child changed completely. The adopted son or daughter lost all rights in his old family and gained all the new rights in his new family. Listen, the old life of the adopted son was completely wiped out. All the debts were canceled and nothing from his past was counted against them anymore. Sounds a lot about like something we know, doesn't it? When, we become, when he becomes our Abba, he takes away our past. He forgives us of our sins and as far as the east is from the west, removes those sins. Amen. You know how far is east to the west? It never meets. If you're traveling north and you keep traveling north, you'll eventually start going south. Amen. But if you start traveling east, you will always go east. Because east and west never meet. So as far as the east is from the west, he remembers our sin no more. He washes away our past. And it is no more. And we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. And we get a new name written down in glory. I don't know what my Hebrew heavenly name is going to be. But I don't care what it is. As long as it's on the list. <laughs> and I'm going to know what it is. If I be Jewish, it will be like, like a Mahatma Rice or something. I don't care what it is. But I just, <laughs> Mahatma Rice, your name. <laughs> don't care what it is. Krispy Kreme, don't care what it is. It could be Krispy Kreme, Jewish Krispy Kreme made with, you know, kosher bread. I don't care. Thank you. I'm his son. Hey, and he is my father. I become his child. All my debts have been washed away. He doesn't hold sin against me anymore. Listen to this. These people you who are dragging around your past, why are you dragging around? Because God said it ain't there to me. That's the devil that's doing that to your brain. Kick him out of your head. Amen. And get rid of your past because your past doesn't exist anymore if you're a child of God. If you're just religious, you're miserable. <laughs> but if you're a child of God, Jesus, God don't want to be your uncle. He wants to be your dad. Amen. You love the Lord. As Christians, not just God anymore. He's not just God. He's our Father. Our Father who has adopted us into the family of God and has made us as if we were naturally born into him as Jesus was. Listen, listen with this. With the same rights Jesus has. Do you know you and I have the same rights that Jesus has? See, the devil don't want you to know that. With the same inheritance Jesus has in him. As we become heirs and joint heirs with Christ when we get saved, we have rights to his love, his mercy and grace, his promises, his protection, his anointing and power, and have a place prepared in heaven forever as he is also our eternal God, everlasting God. Listen, we have rights and privileges that we have only because he's Abba, Father, in our life. We have many privileges and rights. It also means we have privilege to his authority. No devil of hell can overstep any one of us who are born again. The devil wants you to think that. 
but that's not so. You ever heard the song, Ain't No Grave, No Home About It Now? Death doesn't even have a right to us anymore. We should be jumping pews right now. We should be earning our keep as the holy roller right now up in this place as, the, as Jesus freaks, not just ordinary ones. Amen? Do you love the Lord? He is our Father. Hmm. Galatians 4, 5 through 7 says, God sent him, Jesus, to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God sent his, his, the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba Father. You know one way that you're saved? The Holy Spirit reveals to you whether you are or not. The Holy Spirit reveals that to you. So if you don't know you're saved, hmm. listen, we live in a day and time that could usher us right into the rapture. We need to make sure that he is our Abba and that we are his real adopted children. You love the Lord. We're no longer slaves as his, as his children. We're God's own children. And God makes us his heir and join heirs with Christ. And listen, what we inherit, I'm almost finished. Maybe I should slow down. <laughs> And what we inherit, listen, is what Esau gave up for a bowl of stew. What we inherit is a birthright. Where we are given the privilege of becoming a child of God. Where we carry his name. We're given identity as a child of the king of kings. We are a king's kid. Amen. With the keys to the kingdom and the privileges of the heavenly kingdom, we have righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost and everything that comes with it. We like to call it lanya. I tell you what, God's kids have lanya. The devil's kids ain't got nothing. You love the Lord. We have our true identity in him. Don't let the identity thief, Satan, steal your identity away from who you really are. You want to find out who you are? Stand in the light of Jesus Christ. Can I say something else to you? Don't be afraid of your sinful self. Put your sinful self before God and ask him, Lord, what you see here? Show me so I can willfully give you myself and everything that comes along with it. See, God knows the good and the, and, and the bad. He knows everything about you. The Bible says he knows even the very hairs of you. He's got your hairs numbered. <laughs> See, I'm going to use myself. God don't have to count as high as he used to anymore when it comes to Pastor Troy. But he knows when one goes away. He knows when it turns gray. He knows when, he knows when it turns gold. It hits the floor. He's that engaged in your life. He knows every hurt. He knows every pain. He knows every suffering. He knows every joy. He knows every excitement, even when you don't realize that he's present. He's ever present. He's ever present. And we identify. We're, we're king's key. Where we are given special privileges and position with Christ in the kingdom of God. Listen, we are given access to his authority and covered with his great and precious promises both now and and forevermore. Listen to that forevermore part. Don't we understand that we're never going to die because he is Abba and because we inherit eternal life just as Jesus rose from the dead, so shall we. Amen. When that trump of God sounds, even if we're dead before that trumpet sounds, we're going to come out of the ground and go meet him in the air and forever reign with him. Hey, we're going to receive a glorified body, not this one. We're going to take it off, and even if it is this one, it's going to be in, in good shape. I'm going to have hair like Fabio. I can't believe it's not Fabio. Man, we should get excited. The, the, the glorified body don't have no arthritis. The glorified body don't care around COVID. Are you with me? My mom and my daddy both are home with Jesus. 
And I bet they're running all over the country with Sister Debbie's daddy. <laughs> Amen. And some of your parents have been here. You know what I'm saying? And they're probably saying, I wish they would hurry up and get up here because I want to see me. I want them to see me now. If you could see me now. And we're going to see them because just as they made him Abba, as we make him Abba, we will see them. No longer slaves, y'all, when he is Abba. No longer slaves. This is what we inherit is a birthright. God, Jehovah. Says there, you can, you can look at this. God, Jehovah, God Almighty, God above all gods, the great I am, the creator of all that was created, is our Abba Father. And he is for us, so who or what can ever be against us? We live in a time, y'all, when Satan is rising up in this day and time. That's why we see the things we're seeing. All the turmoil and trouble, the devil knows his time is short, so he's trembling and getting nervous. When the devil gets nervous, he causes issues. And if that is going on to that degree, and if Satan is even more aware of the coming of the Lord, we need to pay attention <laughs> because his coming is soon. His return is very, very soon. Is he your Abba Father today? He is for us. Who can ever be against us? The devil can't defeat us. Listen, because he is ever present with us, we are always victorious. We are ever victorious in anything that we face. Because he is ever present with us, we are everlasting. Because he is ever present with us, we are ever healed. Because he is present with us, ever present, we are ever blessed, ever empowered, ever forgiven, ever transformed and conformed. We are ever changing from glory to glory. And I know some of you are thinking right now, but I have some issues still. You're still changing. You're still transforming. We have a patient father who says, as long as you stay in the family, you'll keep growing and you'll make it. Ain't none of us perfect on our way to heaven, we're going to be perfect when we're getting there. Don't let it hold you back because you have weakness and control. Focus your relationship on the Father. Don't focus on your sin issues. Don't focus on your arthritis issues. Don't focus on your financial issues. Don't focus on your family issues, your marriage issues, and whatever kind of issues you have. Focus upon Jesus. The one with the issue of blood spent everything she had. She had The Bible says she had an issue of blood. She bled for 12 years, and she spent all of her money on doctors trying to get healed. But when she had heard of Jesus, she switched her focus and her all of her attention to Jesus. She heard that he was the healer. She heard that he was the deliverer. She heard all these things. And you know what she did? She brought her issue to him. Mm. And you know what the Lord did? Heal her issue. See, we focus too much on our, on our issues rather than give him the issue. You say, you, we, we, can, we can walk and live in joy. It's a privilege of being a king's kid, an Abba Father kid, amen, not being perfect because we know he's, he's helping us. From glory to glory, he's ever changing us. From glory to glory, he's meeting our needs. From glory to glory, he's with us. As long as you keep pressing in with him and as long as you stay his child, he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. When that trumpet sounds, the only difference between us and now is the change of our address. And I ain't putting on a change of address because I don't want the devil nowhere. Well, no, 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 no. Actually, I'm going to forward my address right to the devil and say, I'm in heaven. You're not. <laughs> Listen. God. Is ever engaging in our lives. God never sees a wasted day with those he loves. He loves spending time with us. He loves to bless us. He loves to help us and forgive us. Give us his mercy and grace. I'm a father. He loves watching us grow. <laughs> he loves it when we love others. He loves it when we honor him and glorify him because because he loves each and every one of us. Listen, he rescues us when we are hurting or broken or in need of him to do the impossible for us. He is a very present help in times of trouble. Even through all we are seeing and experiencing now, God has a plan and there's a rescue coming to his own. 
Good song. Jeremiah 29, 11 still says, <laughs> and it's what Abba is saying to us today to remind us, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Abba Father is our ever-present Father who never leaves us nor forsakes us. Why would we ever, ever want to be estranged from him because of some sin? Why would we want to trade our salvation for some ridiculous thing of the flesh? Amen. Why would we ever want to let anything come between us and him? We know today that Abba is ever present. The question for us is, are we ever present with him? Brother Wayne last night was talking about devotion, being devoted to God. Are we devoted every day? Are we devoted just on Sundays and sometimes on Sundays? Devoted means we're loyal no matter what. It means we're constant with him no matter what. Whether good or bad. Whether we see the blessings fall or the troubles rise, we're devoted. Are we ever present with Him as our eternal Father, Abba Father? How many of us want to go to heaven today? Oh man, I, I preached a message. I preached a message a long time ago that said everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. And when I asked that question, who wants to go to heaven? Wow! The hands went up. Sound like a Saints game. And they were winning the Super Bowl. Wow! After the message, I said, now, who's ready to die? About 50%. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. Question as we're closing today, will you stand with me today? As we're closing today, ask some questions. You know how Jesus went to his father and he was honest with him. It's time to do that today. Can I tell you something? The other day when I was watching some of this stuff going on, on television, I don't watch it every day. <laughs> it drive you nuts. But I see these people who are proudly standing up against ridiculousness and saying some ridiculous things. And at times it you know, gets me frustrated that people would act the way that they do sometimes and say some of the things they say. But the other day I was watching, I'm looking, and my heart began to grieve because how many are going to miss heaven? How many are going to miss out on Jesus because they refuse to come to God and to be rebellious and prideful against Him? them on the hell. So even they still do some ridiculous things that are aggravating. Unless, unless people repent and make him Abba Father, when that trumpet sounds, they won't be going to hell. That's a serious, serious thing. The most serious thing in life is the decision whether we make the follow after Christ or not. We cannot assume that we're going to heaven because we're good people. Good people are not going to heaven. Saved people are going to heaven. When people ask me issues about abortionists and homosexuals, they say, what do you think about those people? You think they're going to heaven? I just going to tell you something. There's only one person that's going to heaven, those who are saved. I don't care if they're gay, straight, an abortionist, red, black, and white, red all over. Everybody still needs Christ in order to have any hope of heaven. I don't care if you're the most religious person. I don't care if we know the Bible frontwards and backwards. <laughs> Satan don't care whether you can quote the Bible. He starts to bother you when you start living the Bible. But we're there. This morning, let's not take any second guesses. Let's be sure. Let's be sure that we know where we are with Christ, with our Abba Father. Is he Abba? Or do I know him just as Jehovah? Do I know him just as, do, not, do I know just about him, or is he truly Abba? Is he the one I go to never have a trouble? Is he the one I go to just because the sun rises? Is he the last one I speak to at night on my pillow because he's Abba? 
Is he the one I praise and give thanks to because he's the one who has given me life and has given me blessings. He's Abba. He's Abba God. Is your relationship with him constant? Do you have a relationship with him? It's not about just praying a sinner's prayer, y'all. That's the first step of entering into a relationship with Christ. It's like asking the one. It's like proposing to the one that you're married to. You don't propose every day, do you? And you didn't propose just one time and not get married, did you? You followed through. Me and my wife be married 65,000 years. It's going to be married. Probably for her, it probably seems like that. In reality, it's going to be 34 years. Amen? It's a constant relationship. And you don't get there without trouble. But you get there with understanding and acceptance and having a constancy about that. Are we constant in prayer? Is your love and passion for Him constant? Are we constant in the Word? Are we constantly in prayer? Are we constantly obeying God? Listen, in closing, last time. Abba loves you and will never condemn you. No, he'll ever push you away or abandon you. He's all powerful to heal and handle anything that you could be facing today. Will you bow your head and close your eyes? Will you turn to him today and pour out your heart like Jesus did in the garden with him and tell him anything and everything? Tell him your hurts and your pains and tell him all that. Will you tell him all your, all your secrets? Will you tell him and share with him everything that's going on with you? If you're not sure you're saved today, will you please, please, please talk to him about that? Be honest with that and say, Lord, I'm not sure I'm saved and ready to go to heaven. Lord, I, I, I'm not sure that you're my Abba. I've known about you. I've been in church. I've been this way. I've been, Lord, I've, I know about you. But I need to be sure that you're Abba Father in my life today. I need to be sure that you're my personal Lord and Savior today. And the way we do that is we believe upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, which is our heir and joint heir. Amen. And we have all the rights and privileges to everlasting life just as he has. Amen. And we, and we believe in Christ, that he is the Son of God, and that he died for our sins to give us eternal life. And then we acknowledge our need that we need to be saved because sinfulness came into the hearts of mankind. And Jesus had to come and be our Savior. But he also wants a personal relationship to be our Lord friend you're here today and you need to renew your commitment to the Lord your walk with Christ I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand I'm going to ask you to be honest and personal right now in prayers we pray Heavenly Father we come to you we come to you with our hearts we come to you with our hurts we come to you with our questions Lord, we come to you with all the impossible things that we're facing in this day and time. Lord, we come to you with our fears. We come to you with the things that we are enslaved to, the things that we can't seem to overcome. Father, with the things that seem to trouble us, Father, we come to you, Father God, with what your plan is for the rest of our lives. Father, we come to you with our faith to believe and trust you that through these times to know that you have a plan and that you're bringing us through, Father God for purposes that only you know, but our faith is in you today. I come to you and I bring my faith to you today, Lord God. Help me to receive you as Abba 100% today. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Maybe for the first time, come into my heart and live inside me. Wash away my sins and give me that new life that Pastor George is preaching about. I want everlasting life. I desire to have and to inherit the things of God. I want to be a child of God and live with you forever. Will you save me today, Lord God? Will you save me? Will you cleanse me? Will you forgive me? Lord Jesus, come into my heart and live. Show me how to live for you. Give myself to you. Lord, some may come to your day with just a renewed commitment, saying, Lord, I want to know 100% that I am in solid with you. Search my heart to see if there be any wicked way in me. Search my heart, Lord, to see if I've been living life my own way or trying to serve you my own way and not being in you where I should be. I renew my commitment to love you, to walk with you, Father God. Thank you for never leaving me nor forsaking me. Thank you that you 
ever see a day as wasted with me, even in all my failings. Thank you for being so loving and so merciful. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody say it.